Hey guys, I hope y'all were well behaved on Friday and that you're meeting the expectations so far today. It's super important that you're focused today because we're starting something brand new. This might look familiar, but earlier this year when we did comparing and ordering, we only did integers. So we did positive and negative numbers, but no fractions, no decimals, no percents. Now we're adding in fractions, decimals, percents, negative fractions, negative decimals, negative percents. So there's all kinds of things that you're going to be asked to put in order. So let's look at example one. It says graph the values on the number line and list them in order from least to greatest. So those words are important. Let's go ahead and underline the words least to greatest. And as you know, I would want you to write out to the side L to G. That's a nice big symbol to our brain. Our brain likes to see it like that. So we know we're going from smallest to biggest. If you look in the table, you see amount of homework complete, but there's all kinds of different numbers. We've got a couple of decimals, we've got a couple of fractions, and we've got a couple of percents. They're all positive, but they're all different kinds of numbers. But as we know from the previous page in your notebook, you can convert from one to the other. If we think about what's easiest, if you look at your number line, it's got decimals on it. Remember that decimals are like money and our brain likes money. So if you can make them all look like money, that's gonna help you. So let's start by making our number line look like money. It almost looks like money, but what do we need to make it look like money? We need an extra zero. So that would be like 10 cents 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents, 60 cents, 70 cents, 80 cents, 90 cents, and last but not least, a dollar. Our first number in our table already looks like money. What would that be as money? Good, that would be 75 cents. So we don't have to do anything to that one. The other decimal almost looks like money. We just have to add a zero, okay? So now we don't have to do anything else to that one. The next easiest thing to change to look like money would be those percents. Take a second to remember how we change a percent to a decimal. It's really simple. We move the decimal two times to the left. So if we look at those percentages, they don't have a decimal, but no decimal in sight, put it on the right. So I'm gonna put a decimal right here. I'm gonna move it one, two places to the left. So that's gonna be like 33 cents. And I'm gonna do the same thing to this one over here. One, two times to the left. So that's gonna be like 60 cents. So now four of our numbers look like money. There's only two left. There's a couple of ways you could make those fractions look like decimals. The first way would be the easiest and that's to have your benchmark fractions memorized. One half is the biggest benchmark. That's the one that everybody should know. You should know that one half is 0 0.5, or if we're thinking of it like money, 50 cents. Four fifths isn't quite as easy as one half, but remember that your fifths go by twos, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So since it's four fifths, if we count 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, that one is 0 0.8, or like money, 80 cents. If you don't know those, if you don't know your benchmarks, remember there's a couple of ways that you could change it to a decimal. You could do Tybo, or you could change it to be something over 10, so it's something in the tenths place, or something over 100, so it's something in the hundredths place. Either of those would work, and if you forget how to do that when you're doing your assignment today, remember, those notes are on the page right before this, page 36. Now we have our numbers all looking the same. So we can go ahead and put them on the number line. Some of them have are already marked on our number line. If we look at one half, it's like 50 cents. I see that right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and write one half. 
80 cents is on here. So I'm going to write four fifths. 60 cents is on here. So I'm going to write 60 percent. Notice that I'm writing them like they were to begin with, because when we put them in order, it's going to want us to put the actual numbers that it gave us. 20 cents is on there. So I can go ahead and mark that one, 0 0.2 or 2 tenths. The only two that are not specifically marked on there are 70.75, 75 cents, and 33%, 33 cents. The easiest one is going to be 0 0.75 because that's going to be halfway between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. So I can go ahead and mark it right in the middle. So that is 75 hundredths. And then if I'm thinking about 33% or 33 cents, I know it's going to go somewhere between 30 cents and 40 cents. Halfway in the middle would be 35 cents, and that's not quite as much. So it's going to go right before where 35 cents would be. So that was 33%. So we had six numbers to begin with. We've marked one, two, three, four, five, six numbers there. So we are done putting them on the number line. Now we just have to write them out on the line. So least is on the left. So we're just gonna start from the left-hand side and work our way to the right. Our first number was 2 tenths, 0 0.2. The next one was 33%. The next one was 1 half, then 60%, then 75 hundredths, and our biggest number was four fifths. And we're done with example one. On your assignment today, you will have some like example one. Just remember, you want them all to look like money. We know money in order. So if you can get them to all look like money, you'll do just fine on this. Let's go ahead and move down to example two. Example two is similar. This time though, they're all decimals, so it's really easy to make them look like money if they don't already. The difference here is that we're adding in negatives, and so it's still going to be easy to think about them as money. Just remember, once you cross over to the negatives, it's like opposite land, so we've got to keep that in mind. This time, it wants us to put them greatest to least, so go ahead and underline greatest to least, and out to the side, I want you to write out G to L. So let's go ahead and look at our number line first and make that look like money. So this would be like negative a dollar. That's if you owe someone a dollar. Negative 50 cents, you owe somebody 50 cents. Zero, you're broke, but at least you don't owe anybody money. 50 cents, you've got 50 cents in your pocket and a dollar. You're still pretty broke, but at least you have a dollar in your pocket. Now that we've made that look like money, let's go ahead and make the numbers in our box look like money. It says change in price. So if it's negative, that means the price went down. If it's positive, it means the price went up. So if I add a zero here, that's like negative 30 cents, positive 50 cents. This already looks like positive 55 cents. This already looks like negative 35 cents. I can add a zero here to make that look like negative 60 cents. And I can add a zero here to make it look like positive 90 cents. So now that they all look like money, we just have to figure out where they go. Again, you don't have to do this in order. So for me, the easiest one to start with would be ones that I see already on there. On this one, I see 50 cents. So I can go ahead and mark 50 cents on there. None of the other ones are on there, but I can figure out where they would go. So think about what other benchmarks you might know. You know what's halfway between zero and 50 cents. What would that be? That'd be 25 cents. So um, halfway between 50 cents and a dollar would be 75 cents. So if I look at this 90 cents, I know that's more than 75 cents. It's close to a dollar. So I'm gonna put that one right about here. So this was the 0 0.5, this is gonna be the 0 0.9. 
Notice I'm starting on the positive side. Again, I'm going to go with what's easiest for me. And to me, positives are easier. So 55 cents, that's our other positive one. Again, halfway in between 50 cents and a dollar is going to be 75 cents. 55 cents isn't as much as 75 cents. It's just a little bit more than 50 cents. So I'm going to put it right in there, pretty close to 50 cents. I've done all my positive ones now, so I'm going to go to my negatives. It's going to be really tempting to put 30 cents somewhere in here. But remember, negative 30 cents is going to be between 0 and negative 50 cents. Right in the middle would be negative 25 cents. And if you owe 30 cents to somebody, you owe just a little bit more than 25 cents. So that's going to go right about here. That's our negative 0 0.3. And then negative 35 cents is going to be just a little more than that. So I can put that right here. And it's a little hard to fit that in, but we'll get it done. Okay, and then we've got one more, and that's negative 60 cents. So again, halfway between negative 50 cents and negative a dollar would be negative 75 cents. And we don't owe quite that much if we owe 60 cents. So it's somewhere in between negative 50 cents and negative 75 cents. So I'm gonna put it maybe right about here. Again, we started with one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six numbers on our number line. This time we're going from greatest to least. And since least is on the left, we want to start on the right this time. So our number furthest to the right is 0 0.9. This is like if we had 90 cents. Then as we start going to the left, we've got 55 hundredths. Then we've got 5 tenths. Now we're crossing over the zero and we get first to negative three tenths, then negative 35 hundredths. Last but not least, our smallest amount is negative six tenths. So again, as long as you're thinking about money and you're making everything look like money, y'all will be able to do just fine on this. Just remember that it, as numbers go to the left, they get smaller because least is on the left. And as numbers go to the right, they get bigger. Keep that in mind depending on what the question's asking you. Okay, so it's your turn to see if you can do this. If you aren't great at it today, please don't be discouraged. When I get back tomorrow, we're going to keep working on this. But I really do want to see what you can do today. So you have an assignment. Please look back at these two examples. See which one it looks most like and just do your best. Okay, I'll see y'all tomorrow.